Hi there, I'm back again after a few days. This time my video will deal with Google Gadgets. I have a blog on Bloggers, uh, which is a Google service, and I needed some uh, photographs from Flickr, which is again a Google service, and I wanted it to be shown on my blog uh, automatically. And like a slideshow, it keeps on changing, rotating the images, random images. Plus, those images were based on some tags which the user can give. Uh, therefore, I decided to write my own gadget and went looking for ways to write uh, gadgets on Blogger. Uh, I found that writing Google gadgets is quite easy because the framework of Google Gadget or should I say the uh, structure of a Google Gadget file is XML based and you can include anything you want. You can include JavaScript, you can include jQuery which I have used in my gadget. As long as your syntax is correct, uh, the gadget is quite easy to write. It's much more easier to write than anything else. So let's start and have a look at the basic structure of a gadget. It's just the basic, it doesn't have any program or anything. The basic structure, as you can see, has three, four uh, parts. First thing you know, you can notice here, do you see this? This is XML, you have to write that, it's an XML file, therefore you must declare it. Secondly, is the module. This is the uh, root element of this file. And then comes module preferences. Module preferences are things which you write about your own module, like the author, the title, and everything else, which is shown as a description of the module. It has nothing to do with the actual working examples, uh, attributes which you can write about module preference, like title. I have named it photo viewer, you can name it anything you want. URL, it uh, points towards the module uh, web page where people can read the description in more uh, detail. Then the height and the width, then the author and the author email. These are some of the attributes which you can give uh, to your module preferences. Uh, these are not used specifically except the title portion. These other things are not used, they are just shown to the user as the description of the module. Next most important part are user preferences and content. Uh, before I go into content, let's look at user preferences. User preferences is the portion where you define the inputs which user can give. Like in my case, it was tags. The user can give search tags, say for example, dance, India, anything on which it will search the Flickr service. Like Google you give search tags, same way you can give it to Flickr too. So user preferences are where you define the inputs which the user will give. You can also give your own default values. You can keep it hidden if you want or you can show. So let's see an uh, example of user preferences which I have given in my uh, gadget. There you go. These are the two user preferences which I have given. One is the tag and the other is the refresh rate. Refresh rate is the uh, time taken between uh, two images. Uh, first, the, first the image is shown and then the uh, gadget waits for the described amount of time and then it changes the image. Okay, so these two are given by the user. I have given the default values. Uh, which you can keep or you can delete. Uh, it depends on the user. Now, every user preference has a name. Now, remember this. This name is the one which we will use in our programming. This is the most important portion. Okay? This is the display name. Display name is the one which is shown to the user. Okay? This is not the one which uh, we will use in JavaScript. This is the name which we will use in JavaScript. Then comes the data type. Data type is string. Uh, in Google gadgets, data type can be string, boolean, enum, 
enum is like a list which you will see later in some other video and if you want to have a look at the official documentation of Google ID then I suggest uh, you go to Google and look for uh, Google Gadget APIs. Uh, in my blog, you can find the exact link to where you can get the official document of Google Gadgets. And it is uh, quite good to begin with. And it gives you small details like the data types and what are the various uh, preferences which you can set, etc. Uh, plus it has some example course which are much helpful uh, anyway so as you can see I have defined two user preferences one is the tag to search and one is the refresh rate uh, once I have declared this user uh, can set it uh, according to himself when he installs the gadget on bloggers everybody uh, who has a bloggers uh, account must have installed some kind of gadgets and it is no different then comes the content portion. Content portion is the portion where you write your code, your uh, HTML, your JavaScript, whatever you want, you write it here. Okay. Now everything which you write in content is written inside a C data section. All right. Let's uh, write a small uh, div. Uh, now this div is the area which my gadget will use to show the images and then there will be another div which will show the title of the image as you know every most of the photographs not every photographs have uh, has a title on Flickr and uh, I'm going to use that title uh, and the photograph to be shown on my uh, blog so let's create two divs which uh, uh, will be used by the JavaScript uh, before I uh, go into much more details, just remember I'm going to use jQuery. Now jQuery can be used from your own site or from the Google site. Uh, you can reference jQuery from anywhere you want. Basically the rules of reference remains the same, just like HTML. Uh, you just give a strip tag with the source and everything. As you can see, I have given the strip tag as I told you. And I have referenced it from googleapis.com. It is a free service, so you can reference the jQuery from here. If you want to reference it from your own site, you are free to do so, but remember bandwidth does cost money. Then comes the two divs which, are, which I was talking about. First is called place images, and the second one is called place text. Now these two uh, divs will be used to place image and text which will be brought from the Flickr API uh, depending on the search tag, right? Then comes uh, the main function or the JavaScript function which will be called when this gadget loads. Just like HTML has on load, jQuery has documented ready, same way Google has a register on load. Just like HTML has on load, uh, jQuery has document ready. Same way gadgets have gadgets.util.register on handler. Can you see this? This is the function which registers the uh, JavaScript code which will be called when the uh, gadget is loaded. Just like on load. In HTML, we write it on load. Same way we are writing here, like gadgets.util register on load handler. This is again a Google API, and I have named my function as show.